What are the best settings for Vulcan launch shots, not engine shots? My last ones were blown out by the solids, right? So first, the distinction between me with rockets is going to be day versus night. I know when you say Vulcan, that was a night launch and with solids. So a night launch with solids, you and your camera and the combination of what's going on probably is where they got blown out. During the day, I tend to kind of treat it like I do an aviation shoot where I don't shoot in manual mode, even though I can shoot in manual mode and I have no problems with manual mode, you know, but I would rather be concerned about the framing. So during the day, I'd just be in either a shutter or an aperture priority mattering on what I want to do. Shutter is I need to control shutter speed for freezing. Uh, aperture is I need to control depth of field. That's just the two modes. At night, I think the problem that you might be getting into is the camera, it's probably looking at the scene and metering it and seeing what's well, really dark up here and it's really bright up down here because those solid rocket motors are super bright. So it sees dark in the corner, it sees light here. That's where having a metering mode that actually is more centered on where the brightest part of the image will actually help you, like we were talking about before, because at night your camera is probably just trying to it's trying to evaluate the whole scene usually because mm -hmm. people don't change it from that mode. And then it's evaluating the whole scene and it's brightening up that area because it thinks it needs the corner dark or brighter. But this cor the corner is dark because it's at night. Mm -hmm. So that's where settings come in. Yeah. And I think that's probably what's happening there. If not, what I would suggest at night is keeping your ISO lower than you think you should, keeping your shutter speed higher than you think it would, and uh, keeping your f-stop higher than you think it would. I think for that Vulcan launch, I was at like 100 ISO f8 or f11 at like one one thousandth of over of a second. And if you think about that, that would be at night, you would never use those settings. It would be way too dark, but that's where it is. is it's all balancing that. Now, if you wanted to use an automatic mode, because that's the hard thing is if you don't know what settings to dial in, this rocket's only going off for a few seconds, so you can kind of, it can, it can mess you up, right? Because right. you only got 10 seconds to figure out the exposure. Yeah, it's not like you can take a test shot. That's where doing some kind of metering mode that's more in the center and then giving yourself a little bit more of a negative exposure value, right? So telling your camera, because cameras are kind of dumb when it gets at night. They really don't have good judgment. Mm -hmm. um, so giving it a little bit more of a latitude down, so giving a negative exposure value as well as doing a more center-weighted metering, uh, which will help. Uh, as long as you're going to frame up the rocket more in the center of the shot, which usually you are because you're so far away from it, mm -hmm. you're going to crop later anyways. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, even if you have the longest of long lens at a distance, you're still going to crop in on it. So right. I would keep it in the center and do your cropping creatively later and then just do a center weighted or spot metering kind of more in the middle and keep that spot on the brightest part and then it'll meter good. That's good advice. There you go. Um, there is actually, uh, he had a follow-up of how do you dis dehaze long distance launch shots? Cause this is a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to say that this is going to happen more during the day. Uh, like the Starlink launch yesterday was, sh uh, shooting through fog. Uh, the humidity was so thick, um, uh, on, you know, and, and this does happen. Like it's very thick and foggy. I would say that your best friend here is the dehaze in Lightroom or in, in camera raw. Uh, but sometimes that can't do enough. So then what it is, is how do I use the haze to my advantage, right? How do I tell the story through the haze? Like, like what will happen too with a rocket that's lifting off, it's hazy down here on the bottom, but as it rises above the haze, it'll get clearer. So maybe I would keep the launch kind of, the, the ground kind of foggy and wait till the rocket gets up in the more clear part and then compose my shot that way. Mm. Um, that kind of helps as well, you know, but uh, there is just the dehaze filter in Lightroom and Photoshop, having that dehaze slider uh, really helps. The only thing you got to do with the dehaze slider is sometimes that dehaze will add a little bit too much green and a little too much blue to your image when it dehazes it. So then you got to correct that later in post. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing you could do is you can punch up contrast, but that's kind of what dehaze is doing. So that would be my suggestion there is my, my bigger suggestion is work with it. Don't work against it like embrace it. How do I embrace mm -hmm. the environment? Fog is a great thing, but it, you, you have to embrace it and you have to go with it.